Hey, what's up everybody? It's Rox and I'm coming to you today with the review for Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 7, Episode 5. So, we are at a filler episode already. <laughs> they could have kept this episode. I feel like it was in preparation for the next episode, so whatever. But anyway, let's get to it, shall we? Alright, you guys, Claudia, nothing with her. Just that she's new here. She just moved to Atlanta and she's in her new apartment. It's really nice. Has beautiful views. She doesn't have her furniture because her furniture hasn't ar arrived from um, New York. It was funny. I was laughing when she was talking about how when she was in Los Angeles and, you know, her body was fine there. But now that she didn't move to this old, you know, <laughs> city where the damn girls is fed with the horses until they 15 years old outside in the back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these big, thick-ass girls. You know, now she feels skinny. I was the same exact way. When I moved here, I felt really, really thin. Everybody was so thick, you know. And I ended up, over the 10 years, I probably put on 15 pounds um, more than what was my normal weight all the time in Los Angeles. It's just shit. <laughs> Motherfuckers is bigger here. Every time I go back now, I feel bigger than all my little friends. But anyway, she kept on saying that she's got to get a booty like uh, Kenya's. I was like, girl, well, that's always easy. Just go to Dr. Curves out here in Atlanta, okay? He will he will hook you up with the big ass just like everybody else. And I ain't even hating because y'all know I'm going to get this stomach sucked in as soon as I hit it big. And that's it with Claudia. Nothing really. It's refreshing to see Kenya, you know, in scenes where she can just be her normal self and, you know, she's not fighting with somebody. So that is a refreshing thing. They needed somebody to, you know, be on Kenya's side. And so that's a good thing for, um, you know, it's a good thing that Cynthia's, I mean, um, 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 Claudia's there. They have some things in common. Okay, one being the fact that... Um, they both have a strained relationship. Well, Kenya has a non-existent relationship. Claudia has a strained relationship with her mother. And it's the whole thing with the whole biracial mixed, you know, kids syndrome. I mean, I'm I'm not trying to be insensitive to the whole mixed kids, but you hear so many people that are from biracial, um, you know, that have biracial what is it called? <laughs> have a, a mother and father that are different races. Um, always talk about whatever kind of struggles that they've had growing up. From culture differences to people being just not really able to communicate well to them being teased in school and growing up and having to deal with the whole light skin, dark skin. And yeah, it's a whole bunch of things that I don't really, you know. I didn't even realize it until I've gotten older. Of course, now it seems like everybody who is of mixed descent... I always got to, you know, some shit that went down. I had no idea that it was that bad. I, I guess it is. So that is Claudia's story. Anyway, that's pretty much it with Claudia. Nothing. As Candy and Todd, they go to look at her old house in Fayetteville, the one that she had given to her mom, but her mom had never moved into because I'm assuming she wants to either rent it out or lease it out, sell it, whatever. And uh, when they got there, the shit is all fucked up. <laughs> okay. To put it plainly, Joyce's damn boyfriend and got his ass up in there and then ripped all the shit out like niggas do when they about to, you know, they know they about to lose the house and they gonna move, so they gonna take all the fucking shit off the damn walls, the, 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 um, fixtures off the walls, and they take the sinks and the bathtubs and the toilets. <laughs> so, you know, of course, Todd, the voice of reason that gets on Candy's nerves, he's telling her that, Joyce does all these things because there's never any kind of consequences for it, okay? It never goes far enough where Candy, you know, is does anything about it. And Candy's whole thing is, oh, well, I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to cut her off. And it's just like, it's not about cutting her off. I don't know why Candy always has to take it all the way to that furthest extreme. Oh, my God, they opened a kiku right over here. Oh, they opened this steakhouse. This one that's right by my job. I mean, there's one right by my house. They didn't open one right over here by my job now. I am so excited about this. <laughs> I done got y'all. This show was so boring. I didn't got distracted. So anyway, but yeah, she always has to take it real far and say that she has to cut her off. Nobody's saying that you have to cut her off. Okay, but see, I'm not going to listen. I'm not fixing to get all riled up with Candy and Joyce, okay? I already said I ain't going to let her be fucking with me this season because we already know that Candy is still going to do what Candy does, okay? And what does Candy say? I don't really have time to get all upset about, you know, things that I can't control. I just figure out ways to fix them. 
Well, you only do that because you can afford to, okay? Let a motherfucker ain't got no money and somebody then came over there and tore up my damn house. Then it's going to be a fucking consequence for all of this, okay? So, you know, it's always an excuse. Candy always has an excuse for her mom. Yeah. I, whatever. Later on, though, Candy, you know, because supposedly she's so upset about what happened to her house, she goes to get the comic relief of Aunt Nora and Aunt Bertha. And y'all know we love them. Y'all, did y'all check out Aunt Nora and Aunt Bertha? Okay, Aunt Nora still look the same, but honey, Aunt Bertha didn't got that shit together, right? She was like, fuck, I'm gonna be on this TV show. We're gonna get this head together. She done went and got her some shit added in. It's silky. And um, you can tell that they are much more camera ready. Like, they, they, they're used to being around the camera now. So they talk, you know, and they're a little bit more engaging and all of that. You know, them two really could have a show. They really could have a show and I think people will watch. But anyway, you know, they just like, ah, how you doing? You know, Nora. You just got married. And then Aunt Bertha says, and it's time to work on the baby. I guess everybody is putting a pressure on Candy and Todd for this baby. Candy's not getting any younger, so yeah, it is definitely time to be working on it. They say they work on it, they just are not able to as much because he is gone. But then we get on this house. Did you tell Aunt Nora about the house that we went to go look at with my mama? Yes, Joyce told me she likes it. I was like, I bet you the fuck she do that big ass house. Candy lets us know that she put a contract on the house and that she's going to be right down the street. Uh, Nora asked her what she gonna do with the house that she has and she was just like in Fayetteville well first I need to fix everything that my mama boyfriend and tow up in there which like I already told you is frustrating you know I think Candy already knows that she's going to be the one to fix that, even though she keep on saying that she's going to hold Joyce to it. And did you guys catch how Aunt Bertha was trying to get them to stop talking about it? Because, honey, Aunt Nora was just like, I'd have put his ass out. He'd have been gone. <laughs> Bertha was just like, y'all going to fall out over this here? Bertha was just like, y'all need to ex-nay on this conversation about Joyce and her damn boyfriend. Uh, but, you know, Candy was just laughing like she was going on and on about Todd and her man over here fucking up all my shit. Then they get on the subject of... Sharon. It doesn't even really feel right talking about Sharon. I hate that they're going, I don't know what else they could do. I mean, you know, the show has to go on, but it just feels strange that they're going to be having this whole thing with Sharon and Joyce and, you know, Joyce calling her a whore and all that. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be hard to review for me. I just, you know. I don't really feel all that right talking about somebody that's died. But anyway, you know, Bertha was just like, I just want Sharon and Joyce to forgive and forget. Okay, well, we already know that it's too late for that, which is really sad. So, yeah, that's it. But like I was saying, Bertha and Nora, all right, Anies, I see y'all. Y'all done got it together for these shows, ain't you? You trying to get a deal? <laughs> First, we have Cynthia talking to her mom and her sister and Peter about, you know, what she don't owe Nene. And the fact that Nene been going around town and bad-mouthing her and saying all these interviews and saying all this. And she don't owe Nene nothing. The world don't revolve around Nene as far as Cynthia is concerned. And she don't have no problem telling Nene exactly how she feels and yada, yada, yada. Big, tough talk for Cynthia. I was just sitting there the whole time just like... And then we see Candy and Phaedra at Phaedra's house. And I know we keep on saying that Candy is being messy. And Candy is being messy. I'm sure they're telling her to, you know, be the, the one to try to bring everybody together. Because Candy is the only one that somebody's not mad at. You know, Claudia can't be the one because she's new. So, and we saw how that went last week. So, Candy, I guess, would be the right one to try to bring them together. She's talking to Phaedra. Honey, Phaedra is not really trying to hear it now. We, you know, we do remember Phaedra saying that one time that she would apologize to Kenya. But, um, you know, I don't know if who done got to Phaedra. I'm sure many of you guys will say Nene. Um, definitely some people have talked to her. She done sat down with herself and really thought about it and decided that she does not need to apologize because, you know... Kenya was still cutting the fool. And as far as Phaedra's concerned, Apollo did lie about it. Okay, so Phaedra has flipped her position on it. Candy was just saying that we all need to get together and, um, you know, sit down and, and have a discussion about it. And so we can all move past it. You know, Phaedra is just like, another night with the monkeys at the circus. <laughs> I was just like, I guess when you black, you can call somebody else black monkeys, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then we get Nene and Greg, y'all. And, you know, we done got Greg's old geriatric ass up there. He is strictly there just for fun, okay? Greg say he ain't got shit to do with all this rest of the shit y'all got on there. He just want to provide a little laughter to 
everybody watching the show because he always and then they give him that old dumb dump dumpy music like he's like almost like an elderly like <laughs> senile or something you no know, they teaching the boy the son i was like damn that boy is big for 15 Again, we find out about this thing. Candy has texted Nene and told her, you know, we're going to all get together. And, and uh, you know, Nene was like, I'm not really going to be apologizing to Kenya. I know one thing. If we all fixing to have this big kumbaya, then everybody fucking needs to apologize for their part. I was 100% with Nene. Okay, I bet you I won't be the only one sitting up there saying I'm sorry. And I'm not saying the shit first. If I was Phaedra, I wouldn't have said that shit first. You gonna say sorry, and then I'm gonna say sorry, okay? And if you don't say it, then fuck it, I'm not either, okay? So everybody need to be on the same page. I was with Nene on that one. Then we get to the big night. Candy's there first, and then Phaedra gets there. Like I told you before, Phaedra is so not there for the bullshit. You can tell she's over it. Her attitude is not really the best, but she's just there because... She has to do a show. She does this little prayer. <laughs> I was like, you gonna pray away the whores and everything, huh, Phaedra? And then after Phaedra, then Cynthia gets there. So Cynthia says that she is going to be nice to whoever is nice to her, and she's gonna come for whoever comes for her. Okay, y'all remember that part, right? <laughs> okay. And then we get Kenya walk in, okay, and his hugs all around and kisses for everybody but Phaedra. Phaedra just gets a high Phaedra. <laughs> I was laughing. Then Portia walks in, you know, she's very bubbly and cute. She looked adorable. I thought her dress, her hair, makeup, all was really, really cute, you know, in that old cutesy, dumb Portia kind of way. <laughs> I know somebody gonna be like, why you call it dumb? She just walked in. Shut up. <laughs> then did you guys catch Cynthia's old haterific ass when she, you know, commented that the only reason why Portia looked as good as she did was because either those dish checks was coming in or that her married African prince was kicking in on the bill. I was just like, ooh, Cynthia, you know you being a mess. And then lastly, in walks Nene. Okay, so it's real tense. It was very strategic on the way everybody got there. Candy tries to get it started and was just like hoping that everybody can talk so that they can move forward on things. Kenya starts up first, you know, basically saying that I know you guys don't really believe that Apollo did lie, but can you just can you give me the benefit of the doubt? Because I've always stuck with the same story, which was that I did not do anything with him. Nene was just like, well, listen, I've never really called you a whore. Okay, I don't know. I can't speak for these other girls, but I ain't never called you a whore. Okay, so I'm just saying that the original reason that you and Phaedra fell out was over over video, right? And uh, Kenya was like, yeah, that's how it started, but it grew from there. And, uh, you know, Phaedra, you know how Phaedra can be over on the side just kind of mumbling and everything. So Kenya was just like, well, Phaedra, you got something to say. And <laughs> Phaedra was just like, baby, I know I called you a whore, okay, and I called you a slut. Because if it walks and talks like a duck, then God damn it, it's a duck. I'm not fixing to sit up here and apologize for nothing. You did what you did, and honey, that's it. Okay, now if you, if you you, if you, it didn't make you feel any better, I won't persecute you no more for shit that's happened in the past. But, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you and Apollo both got this shit going together. Y'all can go run off somewhere and be together for all I care, okay? I can't worry about it no more. But I'm not fixing to say I'm sorry it's not coming. <laughs> Kenya still tried to keep on going on and on about, you know, how she's vindicated. But, you know, Phaedra still didn't apologize. Look, you can fucking want apology all you want. You're not getting it. I really wish you would move on with the just the let's wipe the slate clean and start fresh angle. Okay, because you're not getting an apology. You wouldn't have got it from me either. Oh, the fuck well. And then we get to, you know, what's the big story, which is Nene and Cynthia. And you guys, every time I see these two, their story, it makes me sad because... Even as much as Cynthia might have got on our nerves and even as much as Nene gets on our nerves... You know, you could tell that they, they had a real friendship. It wasn't just a manufacturer for a TV show type of sh uh, friendship. They were real friends. And, of course, you know how it starts off when you try to have any kind of conversation with Nene. Nene is a big personality. She is a strong personality. She is somebody who does not really allow you to really talk too much. So if you're going to come up against Nene, you better fucking be ready. Okay, because she doesn't allow any give space. So, you know, Cynthia is going on and on about Nene. You know what it is, and I know what it is. It don't have nothing to do with these other girls at the table. And Nene was like, exactly, so why are we talking about it at the table? Cynthia's whole thing is that she didn't wake up one day and decide that she was not going to be friends with Nene. No, what Cynthia did was filmed all last season with Nene. Okay, whatever problems that they had, Nene calling Peter a bitch and all of that stuff, they was able to squash it on camera. 
okay and it was all done friendship intact and all and then when the show aired and the pressure of everybody that was watching the show the public people watching the show the pressure of everybody saying you don't need to be Nene's friend because Nene does this and Nene does that and she don't respect you and she don't respect your husband she don't respect your relationship okay you give way more than she does okay and everybody was going on and on at Cynthia about why she shouldn't be Nene's friends and she succumbed to that pressure so when they got to the reunion and Nene thought her and Cynthia was fine and then Cynthia is upset about all of the shit of everybody telling her She's sitting there at the reunion, and all of a sudden, she's now not Nene's friend. It's miscommunication. It's pressure on both of them. Um, listen, ain't nobody saying that Nene is not a lot to deal with. Nene is a lot. She, I don't know if her friendship demands a lot or if, you know, Portia, I mean Portia, if Cynthia is just one of the, those ones that really sacrifice a lot for her friendship with Nene. I just can't see Nene asking her to be that way. That's something that Cynthia chose to do on her own. She was all up Nene's ass, but Nene didn't shove her up it. Okay, so when Cynthia had to finally realize that maybe she was giving too much in that relationship, okay, well, the friendship kind of fell apart. I think that if Cynthia would have just been like, you know what, I need to step back a little bit. I'm giving a little too much. You know, I'm not really happy with the way things are going with, you know, Peter and you and me and Greg and how everything has been, you know, whatever. But instead of that, she just kind of let the pressure, and I understand, I look, these reality shows can be a lot. They're stressful, I'm sure. You have, all, and Real Housewives of Atlanta is a lot. I'm telling you, I, you always, I keep telling you guys that I always got to get myself together for these videos because I just be like, <sighs> So I can just imagine them, the pressure that they get. So I think that it's just that Cynthia didn't handle it. Sometimes you just can't be that friend anymore. Sometimes you got to pull back. And instead of her being that way, she tried to make it all seem like Nene was just this horrible, bad, terrible person to her. When Nene is just like, I haven't done anything to you. I don't know what I did. That's my take on it. I just feel like it's really, really sad that it happened that way because... I think that Cynthia and Nene's friendship could still be intact if Cynthia just knew how to compartmentalize her friendship and her husband and her business and, you know, her television relationship with Nene and all of that. For her to just really, you know, she gave under the pressure. And then Nene, of course... When she gets mad, like I said, she's full steam ahead. She's going on and on. She's not allowing um, Cynthia to talk. Okay, she's just like, no. What you should have done was called me and said, friend, let's sit and talk. Not when I'm at a table with all these other bitches that don't give a fuck about you or me. I mean, I fully understood what Nene was talking about. Yeah, I wish Nene would pull back and because, but you know, I have friends like that. When they are in it, they in it. Okay, they can't pull back. Um, maybe later on they can understand, but see, I think these two are just too far past it now. I think they too hurt. Nene is like already like, you know, a fuck her. Like I, you, I'm not going, I don't wish you no ill, but I am so over this because I treated you like a fucking sister and you ain't, you know, you ain't said, you ain't told me yet what the hell I did to you. And I think that Nene, I think she intimidates Cynthia and, and Cynthia clams up. You know, you, like I said, you can be as prepared as you think you are, but you come up against some Somebody like that you know it, it sometimes if you're not a person that's used to you know confrontations and things like that you will clam up it's sad to me it's it's a sad situation there because I can understand both sides I just really think that everybody's just so hurt and upset about it that they can't you know they can't move past it and I don't think that they ever will um I think Cynthia's whole attitude now is just like you know well I don't have to do this that and the other and you know Nene's whole attitude is just like Psh. Okay, girl, bye, like like Cynthia said. So, anyway, that's it. We're going to get more of it next week because it was really just the beginning. Um, but uh, from what I can tell, it looks like she did kind of get to Cynthia. So, we'll see. But, yeah, that was, that was the gist of the show. Not too much of nothing, right? All right, you guys, so that's it. I was like, filler episodes on episode five. Y'all, it's going to be a long fucking ass season. <sighs> just so not looking <laughs> forward to it. Y'all remember to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is For It's Rocks. And everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right. All right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I plan on doing the same. Until next time, Rockstars. Bye.